Hey everyone, what's the crack? Lawrence here with another absolutely insane product. This is the VPG Elemento Pro. It is a steering wheel with a screen in it. It's a Formula One style. It's just amazing. It is the stuff of dreams. It's been sitting here for the past week and I've not been able to do any video on it because my throat was sore. Can you imagine my excitement right now? I can't wait to unbox this, get this on the rig, use it for the first time. Let's do it. So this is not the first time that I've received a steering wheel in a case like this. Uh, it always adds a real air of, I don't know, um, just it's, it's a little bit exclusive. It's a little bit elite. Uh, if we look here at the front, it actually says Elemento Pro uh, on the front of that, which is a lovely little touch. So even though this is a gen relatively generic case that you can get on Amazon, uh, they've gone to a little bit of extra effort uh, with that logo on the front of it. And I can't wait to open this. I have been looking forward to I need to zoom in on this here. Right, now let's have a look in here. Okay, we've got uh, stickers. We've got some uh, little bits of mounting hardware, some bolts and stuff like that. So something just fell out. Oh, there's a hole in the bag. Now this is a review sample. So other people will have used this one before and I don't get to keep this wheel, this is just on loan. Because when you're talking about this level of equipment, for smaller companies, it's not that easy to just give away one of their flagship models and never hear from anybody again. They don't know what's gonna happen with it. So it's much easier to just pass it around. So other reviewers will have already had their hands on it and hopefully other reviewers will also get their hands on it after I'm done with it. Uh, it is the type of product though that I could be very tempted into buying, I think, because it's exactly on my roadmap. It's exactly what I love in a product from a visual point of view. I hope that it delivers in person. I hope that it's exactly the way that I imagined. And I can already see some crushed carbon shifters. Um, I've got some high quality connectors here for the, um, just the USB connectivity. Uh, it's not a hugely long cable, but ex a little USB extension lead could solve that. This is the moment now. I'm quite excited about this. Quite excited about this. Oh my God, look at that. Oh my God. So the colors, again, you can get this all customized. You can get the buttons customized and stuff like that. Uh, when you actually buy this, when you actually order it, they're all built to spec. Oh, sorry, I'm just getting a little bit lost in, uh, it's, it's like Christmas here. Let me, uh, let me get myself sorted out here. There's nothing else in that case. Let me throw these bits back and let's have a close-up look at this steering wheel. So here's the steering wheel. It's very dark. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that on the screen there. Um, it's, it's very, it's very, oh man, it, it's like something out of the Batmobile, to be honest. Um, beautiful crushed carbon front on it. Uh, this steering wheel, like a lot of products, especially during the last two years, uh, people kind of felt that uh, they could do better or they wanted to DIY, they wanted to save money or whatever. Uh, and they started creating products themselves because on the uh, face of it, creating a steering wheel or creating a set of pedals or something like that is not actually that difficult to do. To do it to a standard like what this seems is very, very difficult. But I think Manny and Mike, who are actually responsible for VPG and their products, and they do other steering wheels as well, uh, they um, kind of made a steering wheel first out of necessity. Well, not maybe not necessity, but they, they had an esports team uh, a racing team and they wanted a steering wheel. They gave wheels to uh, the people in their team and they really liked it. So then they um, sent stuff out for, you know, larger manufacturing. Uh, they invested more in the materials and started selling outside of their team as well. Uh, so that's kind of where this came from. And that's a very typical story. Uh, but again, that's enough of the background. Let's have a look at this steering wheel. So the first thing we notice, of course, is there is a, a huge uh, black area here, which looks like a screen, but in the light here, I do see that the screen is quite a bit smaller and we do have LEDs at the top, which is nice as well because a lot of people love those LEDs, even though with a lot of dashes you can have on-screen LEDs and you can customize those. It's nice to have the individual uh, standalone LEDs. I can see a little bit of signs of wear, but that's probably just from uh, this being handled by other people, um, other reviewers and stuff like that. Something to be aware of just at the top here. Um, the buttons have a, Quite a nice click actually, 
uh, it's not too clicky there's a little bit of uh, movement in each of these buttons so there's a little bit of like up and down movement and left and right so that's a little bit uh, peculiar uh, but it should feel it shouldn't be an issue when you're actually racing yeah there's quite a nice high joystick on that uh, the left and right and up and down aren't too clear but it should be relatively easy actually yeah they're pretty clear when your hand is on the steering wheel again that's they're all things that i'll have to figure out when i'm actually using it the grips are quite uh, small so um they could be chunkier uh, but they are quite ergonomic again i'm not sitting at a rig right now so i don't know exactly where my hands would be but it does feel it does feel really nice these encoders are very nice uh, so these you can get as encoders or you can get them as rotary switches uh, so you can have them set up for your engine maps your mgu uh, maps or whatever as individual inputs or just you know when you rotate it left it'll go one input when you rotate it right another input so you can set all that up when you actually order it so you can order these exactly to spec these rotary encoders are lovely as well um, i can imagine that they're very easy to use even with gloves loads of buttons as well we've got five buttons on this side four on that side so uh, plenty of buttons rotary switch here uh, that is a seven uh, is that a seven way no it's not uh, it does click down but there's no uh, rotary on that uh, but that's fine you have plenty of rotaries you have seven rotaries to choose from here so it's quite light um it's uh, it's small like especially if you compare to the likes of uh, gomez steering wheel uh, or even the formula csx2 it's a lot smaller it's very it feels very purpose built um, and you can see there's a lot of uh, like weight saving in a lot of the materials that are used some exposed electronics here uh, that go into the circuit board uh, that looks like a billet aluminium uh, housing and then the shifters they sound quite satisfying seems to be a nice weight on those uh, the clutch paddles are a little bit they're quite small um, and there's not a huge amount of resistance on that but it shouldn't be too difficult to put a stronger spring in there either um, and they go quite far which is which is nice too but they come quite close to the steering wheel so if we look at that travel they actually come quite i would have expected them to probably stop here but they go almost twice as far as where i would expect them to go again i don't know if that's an issue i'm just pointing it out because these are my first impressions and this is what i do around here um, the other bits that we got are probably just a different pcd so if you want to fit a different quick release or whatever the uh, connector uh, connects on here it's slightly off center so it's slightly off to one side i don't know how that's going to affect uh, you know if there's any weight in that or whatever you're probably what i'm probably going to do and what i probably what i usually do is wrap it around the uh, steering wheel column or the the shaft of the wheelbase anyway uh, the crushed carbon looks great uh, we've got uh, number zero five and this is uh, a zach on the back there i really like what they've done with these labels on here on the anodized um, metal uh, it's they, they don't feel like they're raised at all they're not a sticker uh, so they're nice obviously you can't change them easily as a result these are stickers so you can change these but you can get all these things in various different colors um, you can spec it completely as you want so i cannot wait to get this on the rig you see when when i think of uh, dream sim racing hardware sim racing equipment this is the type of thing i think of it's the centerpiece it's the, the showpiece for your uh, your rig when you walk past it because you know i have a rig in my house that i don't always get to use because i'm looking after kids and stuff like that i love having the rig there and i love looking at it similar to how people with cars and stuff don't always get to use them but they enjoy having them they enjoy looking at them something like this for me really is a centerpiece on a rig so my expectations are super high i know it's built by uh, two guys and a small team but my expectations are no less than uh, what they would be if a top company was to make something like this the likes of asher or cube controls or precision uh, this has to be judged on the same playing field so uh, that's enough rambling i think let's get this installed on the rig and let's give you my first impressions so here we are in the rig and i've put a quick release on uh, the back here uh, this is i've got the camus wheelbase on here right now so i've got the camus quick release here uh, i've only used three bolts to fasten it 
just because these take fairly long bolts. But I like that there's access here and um, that you can, ac can access the back here, uh, which is nice because these bolts go into the quick release. A lot of quick releases go into uh, the uh, the flange that you have here and you might have to put a bolt on or whatever. Uh, but these is bolted on quite well. It feels really solid on there. So that's all good. Uh, there's, I like the light construction that they've used here as well. Uh, that's nice. Uh, and it should just offer up to this pretty simply. There we go. And we're offered up. Now, one thing that I haven't done is I haven't connected the USB cable. Um, I did note that the USB cable was a little bit short, so I'm probably going to have to put an extension on that. Let's grab this a sec and pull this off. Have a look at this. And let's get so it's like a four pin. After. I'm not sure where. Oh, there is a little notch. Is there a little notch in here? Like it. That notch is facing downwards like this. Go. And this should connect on like this. A very industrial connector. That's not going anywhere. I have no fears about that at all. So let's click that back on go then i like to wrap this around uh, but yeah I, I have a little usb port down there especially for steering wheels i'm gonna have to probably now that said this the steering wheel the cable itself is quite robust so might actually just leave it there and not wrap it around the steering column uh, because it has a little point on my rig here that it, uh, it's it's going it's going to catch the flex anyway. So it's just a small USB extension. Uh, hopefully that's enough. There we go. Here it connecting. Whoa! Look at that. Straight away we get a very vibrant look. I'm not sure why the steering wheel is moving that steering, but that's nothing to do with this. VPGSimLab.co.uk. Very nice. So we're on the uh, VPG Sim page here. Uh, this is the Elemental Pro page. If we go to the home page, we can actually see they have some other steering wheels as well. They've got an LMP style. Uh, this is more, I think, a Porsche GT style. Not 100% sure. Uh, we're concentrating on the Elemental Pro today. Uh, the download section is a little bit odd. Uh, you won't see this. You'll see it like a password screen. Uh, you get a, a little welcome card with it that you can scan. Mine didn't actually have that, but I was sent a code. So I was able to log in here and download the actual uh, the manual. So if we have a quick look at that manual, it's like a welcome pack. Uh, so it tells you what you get with it, stuff like that, little gaskets, set of stickers, stuff like that. Um, and um, yeah, kind of spec overview here, the amount of buttons, stuff like that. It's a 300 mil wheel, uh, all that kind of stuff. Nothing. Um, yeah, nothing too. I mean, you can read through that spec sheet. There's no point in me going through that here. Uh, it shows how to install quick releases and stuff like that. That was actually quite intuitive. Uh, and then there is a VPG Sim Suite. So, SimHub software. Um, I have SimHub installed. I have the latest version. Open SimHub. Uh, select the game you're using um, and select game config. Okay, interesting. Uh, all right. So, there's a wheel configurator. There's a little bit more to this than I. Um, expected okay a couple of steps here i'm going to save you all the hassle of having to sit through that i'm going to do that and i'll be back in a sec okay so here we are loading into the game um the buttons came on after some configuration was done and stuff i did this configuration largely myself um the thing is you don't necessarily need to go through all that configuration yourself i see there's a lot of flashing going on again not sure if that's uh, right, I see. Uh, this is probably just a pit limiter causing that to flash. Uh, pit limiter is on. I've got some. Uh, it's a little bit arcadey. This is just one of the dashes that I uh, set up. These dashes, you have to um, you have to select a specific dash profile before you go in. It's not like with standard Sim Hub dashes for like Vocore and USB D four eighty and all that, where you can just uh, cycle through the dashes very easily. So uh, that's a bit of a pity because. I like to just switch between sims and dashes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's that's a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit of a pity. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to pay too much attention to this flashing that's going on uh, here. It's a little bit distracting, but 
Yeah, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Okay, so I've got various dashes going on here. Okay, so I've got the ability to cycle through this profile. It's a little bit arcadey for me. But it's quite it's quite cool, it works quite well. Right. So I've spent a little bit of time with it now, uh, and uh, yeah, so loading profiles is not as straightforward as I thought it would be. Um, you actually have to, um, you have to configure the software. So there's um, a profile within SimHub, which sends the right stuff to the wheel. Then you also have to use the VPG software to actually upload a dashboard. Uh, one limitation here is, it, this, so this is a Nextion based system. So next day on is basically the uh, thing that controls the screens, but also uh, the button, stuff like that. And that's hooked in through a, a plugin in SimHub. Uh, if that all sounds a little bit complicated, uh, it is a little bit complicated. Uh, I chose to go and set that up by myself and try and follow the manual, all that kind of stuff, so that I can give feedback to uh, Manny and the crew at VPG. Uh, but Manny insisted many, many times. He said, Lawrence, we do this with customers all the time. It's easy to set up for the first time and we show them how to change between profiles and then that's it. That's all you need to do. So I'm taking the kind of the more, you know, um, the, the I guess, the pig-headed user point of view of I want it done my way or no way. Uh, they provide an excellent customer service and I have spoken to Manny and he's super helpful and knows everything inside out. So uh, when I have an issue, even in text chat, I sent him a couple of messages and he knew exactly what I was talking about and he was able to help. Uh, and he was insisting, can we just share the screen and stuff like that. Uh, but I, yeah, me just being me, I want to figure it all out myself. Let's see, so when we change our, like, our brake bias, here yeah, we get a nice big message on screen. My indicators, LED indicators, are a little bit all over the place. I like the little animations between the screens. That's quite nice. You don't get that with a lot, so stuff pops in pops down that's all nice what else have we got fuel consumption is written on there basically pretty much everything that the screen uh, that the that the, the sim reports seems to be there let's uh, deploy some cars actually coming up here so the cars button up here i've mapped so we can see it actually going down on the right hand side and we should see it regenerate when i yeah when i press the brake so I haven't messed with my MGK I haven't actually mapped the meter here so other than the screen because I know we're, um, I'm concentrating on the screen a lot uh, the grips feel good um, I would like them to be a little bit more chunky and not necessarily chunky in width just behind because I, I like to hold the steering wheel kind of like you're holding um, I, I guess yeah like a like a like there's a trigger behind it kind of that way so have a bit of a curve but like i'd like if the um if the grips were yeah just a little bit chunkier in the uh the the z-axis i guess that would be nice uh what i immediately notice is that all of these buttons are super within reach uh i think i've never ever had a steering wheel that has had this many buttons in reach of my thumbs i can Pretty, other than the three rotaries on the middle, I can do absolutely everything with my thumbs without adjusting my grip, uh, which is pretty remarkable. I'm, I'm very, very impressed by that. There's my DRS. Okay, yeah, so you see the little DRS light comes on when you when you turn that on. Again, this is, I'm just driving a car here. I'm not, uh, I'm not looking to race with it. This is just my first impressions, as I say. I can see tire temperatures, cold tires and stuff like that. Very handy. Uh, I think I do need to try this out in ACC though. Um, because ACC is the main sim that I've been using lately. A dash like this can really give you a huge amount of extra information. One thing I will say is, so I have a quite a, a, a GT style setup here. So I'm actually, you know, sitting relatively high. And almost similar to how you'd sit in a regular car um, whereas to make the most of a screen like this in a steering wheel I feel that you need to be uh, more in a, a formula style position now that said as you can see at the bottom of the screen there's actually nothing there I have no uh, no screen or whatever I, I yeah I'm, I'm kind of looking it's it's difficult for me to get the FOV 
right here because I'm not sitting the way you would sit in a Formula One car. Um, but it would be nicer to have the steering wheel just slightly higher so that that screen is kind of in your vision. Right now, I have to look down at it. But that is actually a benefit of having a standalone dash that you can place just in front of your monitor. Um, just something worth considering. Um, and I think, I don't know, if I, like it's, it's easy for me to say uh, getting these devices sent to me. This one is on loan. I do have to send it back. But I have other uh, steering wheels with screens in them. And it's easy for me to say, yeah, they're amazing because they are. They're beautiful. But if I really had to set up a rig the way that I want to set it up, I would probably have a standalone dash. But that's not the point of this steering wheel. This steering wheel is very much a statement piece. The data that you get on here is stupidly useful, like very, very useful. What else? Yeah, I think we should just jump into ACC here. Then I hit upload. I hit OK. Uh, and then you get this kind of, um, it's a relatively long process. Uh, I don't know exactly how long it takes, um, but uh, yeah, it definitely takes a, it says estimated time, 47 and a half seconds. Um, yeah, it's, you know, if you drive the same car all the time, um, it's fine. Or, you know, you can use the same dash across different cars, of course. Um, so you could have one dash. You don't necessarily have to change it when you go from the Porsche to the Ferrari or whatever. But um, people do like to change those dashes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I worry just a little bit about um, about that friction. As I said, these LEDs seem to be all over the place. I'll figure that out uh, in my own time. Um, I'd like if they worked out of the box. They don't really, they don't seem to. Um, but yeah, these, these buttons are all uh, blue. This is just the configuration for this wheel. You can't change these colors using software. This is a hardware color that's chosen when you customize the wheel. Uh, so that is another thing to consider. Um, everything else, like the, the ergonomics of it, I'm completely, I'm, I'm sold. I, I like it. I love the way it, it, uh, it, it looks and stuff like that. I'd like if it were, if it had that chunkier grips, like I said. It's doing something now, and the, um, the buttons seem to have lost their uh, interesting. I'm not sure. So once this is done, only then can you restart SimHub because you obviously you need SimHub to actually send data to this. So once we restart SimHub, okay, we see our lights come on. We've got the Porsche ACC, and it says the 911 GT3 configuration. So everything seems to be set up now. But yeah, it's just a little bit of a. It it, it probably takes three maybe four minutes every time because you have to start up the software all that kind of stuff just to switch those dashes now that being said the dashes are pretty amazing once they're once they're loaded um let's go into acc here okay we'll forget about all the rest of it everything should be set up get back and let's drive here okay so we see our abs level we see our dash is actually somewhat similar what we see in the uh, game itself so we see our brake bias uh, oil pressure too low i don't actually see that in game so it gives me uh, potentially extra info that i don't actually that i don't even have in game um, right now it's it's really matching acc just let this car pass here this is a live server online I'm not actually even sure what to do about that oil pressure too low. I've never, I've never seen it in game. Okay, there are no, there aren't multiple dashes here, uh, but I've mapped the little scroll wheel here to switch through. Oh, right, there are actually. This one is like what we see in game. So we've got the fuel level and stuff like that. And when we switch to this one, we actually see the track, uh, track state and stuff like that. Very interesting. Uh, it's, it's a, it is a beautiful dash. Uh, and for many, you know, that switching of the dashes, you won't be doing that very often. Uh, yeah, the grip's slightly small. But, yeah, all in all, I need to, do, I need to spend more time with this uh, and really get it, get it dialed in. 
The dashes are beautiful. The buttons are good. They click. Actually, let's just go to the summary. Right, so summary of my first impressions. As I maintain, this is the stuff of dreams, guys. This is exactly what every one of us dreams about in sim racing hardware. Obviously, VR users don't care for the screen and stuff like that. This product is not aimed at VR users. Uh, so let's just make that clear so that it doesn't become an issue in the, uh, in the comments. This is very much for people who want a statement piece for their rig. They want something absolutely beautiful and functional and something that they can justify because they will use it all the time. And this is that type of product. It comes in at around uh, £1,250 sterling. It's UK based, the company, so you will have uh, customs charges and stuff like that. So I make no bones about it. This is a super high end product. It is not a cheap product and it doesn't feel for a second like a cheap product. My only nitpicking is the switching of the dashes. Uh, I think once you're used to that, it's quite easy. Um, like I've used U UGT Ultimate Game Tech, which has its own limitations, but you can switch between different dashes. Um, I've used uh, Vocore displays, I've used USB D480 displays, stuff like that. They all have some limitations. One of the nice things about this is using the next ion display, it's all hooked in to the circuit board of the wheel. So you can actually control like the clutch uh, brake points, and stuff like that. You can control that through the wheel itself. So that's one of the big things that it gives you. You don't have to switch out the software to try and adjust that. So actually while you're on the line or doing a practice start at the end of your quality session or whatever, if you're allowed, if you don't get a penalty, um, <laughs> you can uh, check that and adjust it nice and quickly. So all around, it takes a little bit of ramp up. It's not like your Apple iPhone or whatever that you can take out of the box and it just works. Um, you need a little bit of investment. The team at VPG is more than helpful. I cannot stress how important they want they, it was to them for me to have a great experience. I think they're aware of the limitations of the hardware that they use. Um, nothing better exists on the market. So let's let's be very clear about that. There is no you know better uh, experience that allows you to, as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I'm aware, uh, there's no better experience. Uh, I could be wrong. Correct me in the comments. I don't know how, like, for instance, Gomez does it or whatever. I don't have experience with those products, but any Gomez users do please uh, comment if it's a similar type of thing, if it's easier or whatever. Cube controls users, uh, you have plenty of, um, you know, things that you, limitations that you have and stuff like that. As far as customizing dashes and stuff like that, they, um, they outline that in the manual, how you can go about doing that. I haven't messed with it. This is just a first impressions video, not a review. I stress again, this is not a review. This is nothing to do with my review other than just for me to capture and be able to look back on my first impressions um, and get a sense from you in the comments what you're looking for with this, what your general feel is, uh, if there are specific things that you want me to look at. And I will concentrate on those for my full review, which should be in about four to six weeks or something like that. For now, it's, it's an incredible piece of kit. Incredible. Um, it's, it's absolutely beautiful and uh, it, it feels nice, it looks nice. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm a little bit kind of, you know, uh, this has been sent to me just on loan. It hasn't been given to me or anything like that, but I feel a little bit like I'm not worthy of having something so beautiful on my rig. Um, it has that kind of air about it, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, I don't know if the software switching between dashes and stuff like that, if that's ever gonna get any better, but once you know how to do it, it's actually really simple. Um, so do bear that in mind. Uh, if you're not that tech savvy, the setup could be relatively um, a little bit frustrating. But again, Manny from VPG wants to give you all the time so that you have a great experience and get that all set. So from a customer service point of view, part of what you're paying in the premium of the wheel, you get access to people who really want you to have a great experience. So. That's kind of that's kind of it for me. I'm gonna do more laps. I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of this. I'm very excited about it. Very very excited. You can probably just tell in my face, I guess. Uh, but I'm yeah, I'm very excited about it. And uh, I'll let you know how I get on. If you have any more questions in the meantime, do join my Discord. That's where the community really lives. And I'll be using this on my streams as well, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So do join in. And uh, yeah, 
See you then. I'm Lawrence. Talk to you later.